You know, there's an oak tree in Fruitland that grew from a hitching post that was stuck in the ground. And the man who inadvertently planted that tree was named Hitch, as are the folks who live there now. And that Hitch family tree is the subject of tonight's encore edition of Travels with Charlie. Adam Hitch, who was my original ancestor, was here in Salisbury in around 1687. And he had a huge family. Some stayed here, some went north, some went west, some went south. All the descendants of that family represent about 85% of all the hitches in the United States today. Many families have ancestral pictures, but few know much about them. Few people know, for example, that before your great-grandpappy married your great-grandmother, she dumped him. This is Clarence Hitch. This, this is the guy that got the breakup letter. That's Virgie Jones Hitch who wrote Clarence the breakup letter. Fewer still have that dear John letter. I will ask you as a special favor to please burn my letters and I will do likewise with yours. I wish you success and happiness in life. I will close as now I have nothing more to say. Now obviously Clarence didn't burn the letter and he didn't give up on Virgie either. They did marry and settled this farm outside Fruitland, Maryland. Behind the barn, there's a tree. You could call it a family tree. It started out life as a hitching post. This was a tree that was washed the ground from the, that woods back there, and it stuck in the ground. It rooted and started growing. He drove like a three-foot iron spike or iron rod through this through that pole, and that iron spike is barely sticking out of the tree right now. Well, the tree grew around the spike, and the spike, well, you could say it grew into a book. Without doubt, one of the most complete family histories found in the country today. 1994, I sent out this newsletter and to every hitch in the United States I could find in the phone books, the 550 families. So I got an overwhelming response back of about 150, about a quarter of those saying, please keep me in, in mind. And by the way, here's stuff that I have on her family history. That stuff turned out to be a treasure trove of letters and photographs, deeds and family records, including an actual sheepskin from colonial Philadelphia. Sheepskin? You hear sheepskin? This yes. is This is sheepskin from 1774 of a deed from Philadelphia that this person sent me and said, you can have it. Now, as Mike organized the records and photographs, he began to know the people whose lives were recorded in them. I mean, these were people like you and me that lived many hundreds of years ago, and I just wanted to try to find out as much as I could of how they lived and uh, what their heartaches were, what their good times were, and, uh, you know, wh what compelled them to move west and that kind of thing. You know, all history is family history, and no history is ever really complete. With a family history, every time you answer one question, two more pop up because you find one person, okay, what were their parents? You find another person, what were their parents? And then, so it's just a, just a never-ending, intriguing detective story. Charles Paparella, WBOC News. Mike Hitch serves on the board of the NAB Center for Delmarva History and Culture at Salisbury University. He's also the special liaison to the director at the Wallops Flight Facility. Copies of the Hitch family history can be viewed at the NAB Center here in Salisbury.